Macca's Guides. <laughs> hey everyone, Mac here. Welcome to the Alan Wake 2 Collectibles Guide. These are all of the collectibles available in Cauldron Lake. This is a four-part series with a couple of other videos. I'll make sure to show you the five nursery rhymes, five charms, eight lunch boxes, five cult stashes, and one weapon you can get in this area. Let's start with everyone's favorite, a brand new and shiny weapon. This is available upon returning to Cauldron Lake for the first time. Here you'll be able to go to the general store and make your way inside. There's something you'll need inside of the fridge, no spoilers, but there's also a weapon case here in order to unlock the sawed off shotgun. There's also an inventory space upgrade nearby, so make sure you pick that up. In order to solve this, what you'll need is you'll just need to know the upcoming number on the lottery ticket, which is 39. The pattern is that you put a seven before the number, so the solution is 739. Open it up, grab your weapon, and unlock an achievement or trophy. Pretty early on in the game, you'll also unlock a shortcut that takes you from that site we were talking about earlier. Allows you to open up a fence to find a path that leads to the parking lot. This way you don't have to go all the way around every time. And halfway through this path, there is a radio tower. You'll have to come here at least once or twice throughout the story, so it's unlikely you'll miss this area. But just behind the radio tower up on a ledge, you can find your first lunchbox. Now, the first cult stash we can actually grab in the entire game is very close to the Unalive site. We're here at night because I'm playing a little bit later on in the game, but you'll be here for the first time during the day. And just to the east, if you're looking at the map, you'll be able to find a small path that leads to a little bit of a trailer house here. It's bright yellow, and nearby, just in front of the door, is a cult stash. You can read the clue on the top, go inside to figure out the symbols to open it up, or just follow along with the video and input the correct symbols, which will crack open the cult stash and allow you to grab what's inside. Now, if you open up the map, if you just kind of go a little bit southwest from there toward kind of the witch's ladle path here, you'll notice that there is a dead end with a tent, and here you can find another lunchbox. If any of these areas are not accessible to you for any reason, all that means is that you need to make a little bit more progress through the story. Then kind of smack dab right in the middle of the map, north of the general store, there is this kind of main vein road that might be blocked by some fallen trees, so get a little bit creative as to how you get there. For me, I had to go just kind of behind the general store and then walk on up. I found a lunchbox. Kind of staying with our theme of being near the middle of the map, we are now by the Witch's Hut, which is likely the first break room in the game you'll find. You'll come here, you'll have to turn on the power using a fuse, putting it in the fuse box. Right next to the fuse, just near it, you'll be able to find uh, a lunchbox. Make sure that you're taking the manuscript fragments, taking them to the mind place, and then upgrading some of the weapons you like using. The next cult stash can be found all the way in the southwestern corner of Cauldron Lake. You will need to unflood the area, which is done automatically as you progress through the story and complete the first boss battle. No spoilers. But once you do clear out the water and unflood the area, you'll have access to this new beach side area. Crawl underneath the log and complete the Simon Says puzzle to open it up. Heading north from that previously flooded area, you'll end up in this kind of uh, larger open area near the witch's ladle. This was full of water and is no longer full of water. But if you kind of look off from this light and use your flashlight, you'll notice that there is a cult stash hidden next to a tree and your flashlight will reveal a bunch of yellow arrows that point you towards a key location. So follow the arrows and then find the key sitting on a rock. Once you have that key, take it over to the cult stash Use this key to open it and find whatever is inside. Okay. 
We now move on to what is most likely the first nursery rhyme that you'll stumble across as you cross the bridge into Streamside. When you reach the location of a nursery rhyme, you want to keep your eyes peeled for a doll. Dolls will duplicate themselves, so there's plenty of locations to grab them. If you have one nearby, that means you're going to need to use it to complete the nursery rhyme. But if I pick up one, you might already have it if you're a little bit ahead of me in this guide. Every nursery rhyme has a solution based on the puzzle in the middle. For this one, we're just going to put the crow doll on the sun. Every time you complete a nursery rhyme, something in the world will change. Make sure you grab the doll you use to complete the puzzle, and then the thing that'll change will be the charm. In this case, it's just going to appear directly in front of you on the table. You may also want to keep in mind that when you start the game, you'll automatically have a charm called Logan's Charm available to you. If you then continue up to the very top of the hill, you'll find the Witchfinder Station. And here you can find your next nursery rhyme, which will result in the coffee mug charm. There's also a lunchbox up here that I'll show you before we leave. But just enter the area, go in front of you, and here you'll find the site of the nursery rhyme. You may need a couple of dolls to complete this puzzle, so let's go and grab them. Head inside of the Witchfinder station and go upstairs turning right at the top of the stairs, and here you'll be able to find likely two dolls unless you already have them, the hero doll and the wolf doll in my case. There's also a bunch of evidence you can go through that you can put on your case board later. You can even access the computer, and we will have to come back here eventually. But what you can do is then go over to the nursery rhyme and complete the puzzle as follows. This one's pretty simple and can be done by putting the wolf doll on the tree and the hero doll on the boat. Again, once you complete the nursery rhyme, pick up both of the dolls, and then you have to make sure you go and grab the actual charm that we spawned. This one will be revealed via these black footprints on the ground, and if you follow them, they will lead you to the coffee mug charm, which basically saves you when you're about to die and then will break in your inventory. You actually can get an achievement or trophy for doing that at some point in the game, and if you fully equip your charms with three charms, you'll also unlock an achievement or trophy for doing that. Very close to that Witchfinder station from where we just grabbed the nursery rhyme. In the corner next to some cliffs, you'll be able to find your next lunchbox, hopefully upgrading that pistol along the way. There's an achievement or trophy as well for fully upgrading one of your weapons. We then move down the hill from the Witchfinder station back into Streamside, and we're going to start kind of heading back towards the general store area. And there will be a couple of boxes here that require a screwdriver. There's actually nothing great in them, to be completely honest. Uh, but you can come back here to grab them once you do have a screwdriver. Instead, what you want to do is follow the path and keep an eye out to the right-hand side. You'll be able to go underneath this log. And here, you'll be able to find a generator, which then powers the cabin, allowing you to have a break room. But more importantly, for this guide at least, we do have a nursery rhyme. You want to put the crow doll on the chick, the hero on the heart, and the wolf on the house. Okay, okay. Upon completing the rhyme, make sure you pick up the dolls so you don't leave them behind. And then this should spawn the Kale Vala Knight's Charm by going underneath the log that we came into the area. And then this should spawn a couple of wolves kind of across the path from you. You should be able to hear them if you have a decent headset. But once you take them out, you'll also notice that this birdhouse fell from the tree directly here. I've taken care of the wolves so you don't see them on screen. But this will allow you to just go to the birdhouse and grab the charm. From that break room along that main path, head towards the creek and take a right-hand turn right before the creek in order to find a cult stash. Here you'll be able to input the code in order to open it up, and you'll notice that some of the numbers are painted on rocks and trees nearby. And the code for this is 658.
We're still kind of near that same creek we were talking about earlier. This time, if you follow the creek upstream, it will eventually lead to a waterfall. And like all good video game secrets, you should find something there. In this case, you'll find a lunchbox. You can actually find another lunchbox not far from there, near the kind of northernmost point in the center of the map. I apologize, we're at the nighttime. You can be here during the daytime, it's a lot easier to navigate. But you'll notice that there is kind of a side loop path. And if you follow that side loop path, you'll end up in this kind of open area with some fences that you can look over and see the view. And here you can also find a lunchbox hidden away behind some trees. Last but not least, we have a bunch of collectibles that will require us to have bolt cutters, which is an item that you get kind of near the end of Saga's story. You'll be several hours into the game, and depending on how you play and what order you do things in, you might even be pretty close to the end of the game once you get them. There will be a point of no return, you'll be warned about it, and this will be a good time to come back to Cauldron Lake and use the bolt cutters to get access into the rental cabins. Once inside, head straight through the door right in front of you. This will allow you to come out the back of the house and turn to the right to go next door to find the lunchbox here. Then head back outside from where we came from, head past the house we used to get into this back entrance, and here you'll be able to go underneath a log to sneak into the next chain of houses. The first door will be locked, you can't gain access, but if you go into the next door, you can go through the house and then exit out the front, turning left as you exit to enter that kind of middle house, which is number four. Inside of house number four, we can find our next nursery rhyme on the ground as we enter. The solution to this nursery rhyme is to put the monster on the chick, the crow on the eye, and the hero on the jewelry. As I've stated previously, if you don't have these dolls, they should be nearby, or there will be duplicates as you complete other nursery rhymes in the game, and then you can come back here. Yeah, yeah. Upon completing that nursery rhyme, feel free to pick up the dolls with you, and what you'll need to do is then go out the cabin from where we came and go to the one directly in front of you, which will be labeled number six. As something has changed on the map, that thing is a new enemy has spawned, and you can take out that enemy and then find the coffee mug charm directly in front of you next to the TV. Now next to the TV, only if you've done 16 out of 17 nursery rhymes, you'll find the Federal Bureau of Control case, which you can open up and find the father doll inside. If you can't grab it, that means you're missing some nursery rhymes from the other areas of the game. Now there's still yet another collectible near these rented cabins. We used the bolt cutters to get into earlier in the video and that is a cult stash. If you come out of cabin six and then take a left-hand turn to the end, you'll notice some trees that are marked behind a pickup truck, and behind one of the trees, you can find a specific key that you'll need in order to open up the next cult stash. Once you have that key, head through the units, go underneath the log. We're basically heading back towards where we came from, and then as you head through the house, you will want to take a left-hand turn, and then you'll be able to find cabin number one. Inside of cabin number one is the break room. You have a save slot and the shoebox. Additionally, in this kind of side washroom closet thing, you can find a cult stash using that key to open it up. And if you have all 22 cult stashes, you'll also find a lighthouse key like me. But if you don't have it, that means you don't have all of the cult stashes in the game yet. Last but not least, we are going to grab our final nursery rhyme, which does require us to have the father doll. And to get the father doll, which I just showed earlier, you will need to have all of the other nursery rhymes done in the game. You can go to the rented cabins in Cauldron Lake to grab that father doll. I literally just talked about it about a minute ago. In order to complete this, head into the Witchfinder station. And if you're doing it correctly, you will hear a voiceover coming through some speakers, and this means you're doing it correctly. 
The solution to this puzzle is to go downstairs, put the father on the eyeball, put the mother on the heart in the kitchen, remain downstairs and go across the hallway to find the kid's bedroom. On the ground in the kid's bedroom, you'll find the sun and the hero goes on the sun and then you can start heading upstairs. Once upstairs, take a left-hand turn to go into the washroom and find the waves. For the waves, we're going to put the trickster on the waves. All of these clues, by the way, are given to us through the dialogue happening in the speakers and on screen because I have subtitles. Additionally, upstairs, go into the kind of playpen area. There you will find the hatchling. And for the hatchling, you want to place the child doll on the hatchling. Because this is your final nursery rhyme, you should unlock an achievement or trophy once you complete this puzzle. There are a couple of things still to do really quickly. Once you grab that, you want to head downstairs. You will find a walkie-talkie there, and you want to interact with that walkie-talkie. Blast away the darkness, revealing an upgrade on the table, which is the ability now to have a fourth charm slot. That should be everything for Cauldron Lake. You can make sure you got everything in Watery and Bright Falls before moving on past the point of no return. Thank you for watching. Drop a like on the video. Share the video with a friend. Special thanks to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. Peace.